Hi everyone, this is Ricky with Bromero Cards. I know it's been a long time, but here is my first video in a few months. I'm out of grad school, so I'm happy to start creating now. So we're going to start making a card using some Concord and Ninth products. We're first going to start out with the wreath turnabout stamp, the bottom wreath. I'm going to pull out my Misty here and already have my stamp inside because I tested this card out before I started making this video, as I usually do. What I'm going to do is go ahead and put the tool that uh, Concord and Ninth shows you how to use on their website or their YouTube videos on how to center uh, your wreath position or your turnabout position. And then I'm just going to put a little, uh, a little adhesive onto the card. It's temporary. It can come off. It's pretty easy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing the coloring or actually doing the stamping of the wreath. And we're actually going to be doing this on a light gray cardstock. And the colors I'm going to be using are navy blue, coral, mustard yellow, and then we're going to do some heat embossing with some white heat embossing powder. So basically I'm going to go through and show you how to do this turnabout stamp um, the first round, and then I will fast forward it through the other colors because it's not, you don't have to see all, all of that. So basically, I just double stamped this because I didn't get a good first impression. I'm going to take the tool that is in the Misty, and I'm going to rotate it to the right after I clean off my stamp, apparently. And so as I'm cleaning off my stamp, my Misty is actually pretty dirty. I actually need to clean it really bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the project, and then I'm going to rotate this one direction to the right. You can go whichever way you want. I just always go to the right because I've just always done that. So once I get that put in place, I'm going to ink up my stamp with the next color and go to the next color after that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up until we get to the heat embossing. So while I'm doing this, I just wanted to say that I was in graduate school uh, since March and I haven't been real, really been able to create so now I'm kind of in a slump and I'm starting back up again. I'm excited. I'm going to try to at least do one video per week. Um, I'm not for sure how successful I will be at that but I will try to do that. I do like putting my videos up on YouTube and getting the comments from everyone so that you know they tell me you know they learn something or uh, they share what they do to make things easier. So here I am I'm using the Versamark. I'm going to go ahead and get this stamped onto the card. I'm using the heat embossing powder tool so that uh, powder doesn't get stuck to the card, which here in a few minutes you're going to see that it actually does. But I'm going to go ahead and stamp this, and I believe I stamp it twice just to make sure I have a good impression. And the good thing about the light cardstock is that you can see uh, the Versamark ink, so you can see if you got a good impression or not. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and we'll be doing the heat embossing. So now I have my embossing stuff out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pour on this white heat embossing powder and I'm going to heat this up until it's melted. But as you can see, I'm not for sure how close you could see this, but I actually do have embossing powder on parts of the ink that was still wet while I put this on. So basically I'm just going to take a really small brush and I'm going to take everything off where it doesn't belong. And I could have left it on there because it actually would have gave it a little bit more um, maybe, I don't know, decoration. It would have had white spots on the flowers that it was connected to, but I just wanted to go ahead and remove that. And here I am with my fancy embossing powder uh, tool folded up piece of paper. I do have one of the ones that are that's plastic but I can't seem to use it as a funnel at the end but my embossing powder actually the static electricity makes it stick to the container and I cannot take that. It's annoying. I can't get it off. Even if I use a brush it still sticks so I kind of wasted money. I think I spent like six dollars on that tool but it doesn't work. So I want to go ahead and heat emboss this and as you can see as I go around the heat embossing gets wider as it melts onto the card. And then as you can see as I hold it up this is the final result. 
of this card and I'll actually be showing you at the end of the video what inspired this card. So the next thing we're going to use is the Concord Ninth Furry Friend stamp set. Now I'm pointing to the bear but when I started to do the stamping to save time I was like well I'll do the fox because it's only one color and then a layered stamp for the outlines of the fox. So I went ahead and went with the fox. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp out the fox here. I basically just used an orange on this and I cut out or I'm actually, sorry I actually stamped out two of those and you'll see that I just turned the paper over so that the next time when I do the layering part I just have to switch the paper over and not have to reposition the stamp sets. So now you're going to see me actually line the outline of the animal onto the misty. Uh, this is a little hard for me sometimes, especially when it's a black outline of something, because I need to make sure it's lined up perfectly in order for it to work. So this time I was pr actually pretty successful, but the two cards prior to me making, or the, the one prior to this, I was not as successful. I'm going to use some VersaFine black onyx ink to do the outline. And this is a pigment ink. It takes a little bit to dry, so but it's really dark and it gives a really crisp line. So as you see, I went ahead and stamped this, and then what I do is I just turn over the piece of paper because uh, I had it lined up already, and I'm just making sure it's still good here. And then I'm going to ink this up, and then we'll be done with the fox. So then I decided to take out a flower from the same set. It's just a solid flower with the black outline. And I'm going to just use a pink color here. And then I left this in so that you could see that I made a mistake on this and not every video is perfect. Like some of the videos that you see on YouTube, uh, you think, wow, they got that card completed pretty quickly with no mistakes, but mistakes actually do happen and they happen a lot. And a lot of cards end up in the trash because it, I just mess it up too much. So this one's a little tricky. I'm trying to line up the stamp sorry for seeing my head there in the frame um, I'm just trying to line this up and as you see once I stamp it it actually does not line up correctly so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and restamp this again and get it to be the right way so I'm gonna hold it up here so that you could see that the flower is actually um, stamped correctly and have a close-up of the fox so now what I'm gonna do to save time I'm going to use the matching dies to cut out the fox and I will be right back. So I have the fox and the flower cut out. I decided only to use one flower. And basically what I'm going to do is start assembling the card here. I have a card base of four and a quarter by four and a quarter. It is Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And then I have a piece of Lawn Fawn gingham paper. It's the light gray that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the card. I'm going to put acrylic block on top of the card so it could be weighted down and the, the glue could dry onto the cardstock. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and cut the light gray cardstock to 4x4 four four using a Lawn Fawn stitched square die. So now that I have that completed, it's time to start assembling the card. I'm just making sure everything's even, even on this card. I'm going to start out by using some foam tape to apply to the back of the first panel with the wreath attached to it. And now that I have all the tape on there, I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing from the, the foam tape and go ahead and position this onto the base of the card. You have to be really careful with this because this particular foam tape I'm using is really sticky and if you lay it down too hard the first time and need to move it, it rips your paper. So I'm very careful about that with this. I'll probably move back to the, <clears throat> excuse me, move back to the 3M foam tape once I'm done with this. So, cause that wasn't as bad and you could move it and adjust it if you needed to. What I decided to do is to show the difference between the male fox and the female fox. I just added a flower to the female fox. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the Miss and Miss, Mr. and Miss stamp and go ahead and cut out a strip from that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this strip out. And then what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to even out the sides of the strip. One's a little longer than the other. You can't really tell in this video. Um, but what I need to do is just cut it down a little bit. And I'm being a little brave here because instead of using the, the paper cutter, I decided to just use scissors, which sometimes does not work for me because, you know, I do a crooked cut and then I have to redo the whole thing. But anyway, it looked like it worked. So now I'm going to go ahead and make this into a banner. So I'm just going to cut some little dovetails, I believe that's what they call it in here. Or Anyway, a triangle by cutting in the middle and then going from each side to the middle to go ahead and make that banner. So now that we have the banner cut, I'm going to go ahead and put finish the rest of the card. I'm going to put some foam tape on the back of the uh, fox's heads. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add some foam tape to the back of the banner as well and go ahead and get that stuck onto the card as well. Uh, this tape is a little sticky so I had a little issue cutting it up but here we are. We're going to go ahead and put the card together. We'll put the Mr. and Miss at the bottom and then we're going to attach the two fox or foxes onto the wreath so that they're evenly placed into the card and then that will be my card. It's finished up. Now I am going to show you some other examples of my cards uh, that I made prior to this using the similar step. Um, I did uh, Mr. and Miss, I did a Mr. and Mr., and then I also did a Miss and Miss so that everyone's covered through, um, you know, getting their wedding because people need different types of wedding cards. So there are the cards. I want to thank everyone for watching this video and I really appreciate it. And this is the mug that actually had me make these cards. That was my inspiration. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hope you have a great week. Bye.